Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. If you are brand new to the channel, thank you once again. I really truly uh, appreciate the viewership. Like, subscribe, uh, and share with some friends so we can continue on uh, this journey. Uh, so let's talk about the market. Uh, you know, let, let, stop me if you heard this before. The market is strong. That's it. That's the video, right? That's, that's literally the video. Uh, it's very tough to uh, continue to find different angles and different points of view of the action that's going on. Uh, look, eventually, uh, this market is going to stop. There's going to be an aggressive rug pull. Is that going to happen tomorrow, the next day, the day after, the day after that, maybe next week, the following Monday? Who the hell knows? But the point is, every single day, it's exactly the same thing. Either the market gaps and goes, or the market uh, opens up lower, grinds down, traps shorts at the bottom of range, takes out the previous range and explodes again. And you look at the same names over and over and over again. NVIDIA going absolutely nuts. Google going absolutely nuts, right? I mean, it's the same names over and over again. Microsoft uh, continues to go nuts. Amazon, which which was 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 really good in the last uh, 12 hours or so. Really, really great move. We talked about it last night uh, on the video. The big number off the 1, 114 level looks really, really good. AMD continues going absolutely nuts. All, all the semiconductors, you look at that. Uh, you look at the semiconductor names, they're all starting to break out. Uh, even the SPX, uh, we, we'll use the SPY as a proxy, finally got above the range here that started a couple of weeks ago uh, with um, consolidation with more bad news in the banking space. Even the S&P, uh, this is the highest close in this whole formation that started going back uh, to April the 5th. So that's it. The market is good. That's the best way of saying it. Uh, we've been talking about it all week about, uh, you know, the debt ceiling. They've been talking about the debt ceiling for years, years, years. Every single time they come to this chicken in the road uh, type of scenario, they always come to a common ground and a debt ceiling thing goes away. Uh, the market, quote unquote, was up today because of debt ceiling resolution uh, could be on, uh, you know, kind of a uh, uh, coming on the horizon. Look, who doesn't think it's going to get done? It's been done every single time uh, it's been on the case. And that's basically it. The market continues to go strong. Uh, again, you could do yourself uh, two favors. Either stop complaining. You're, you're burning mental equity or participate in this rally. Uh, again, like I said a couple of minutes ago, eventually this market will get pulled. It's just obvious. Gravity will kick in and gets pulled. But here's kind of how you avoid, right? You avoid that rug pull. Okay, first of all, uh, every single day, you have to come in with a clear mind, clear path to the goal line, and clear research. That research doesn't doesn't mean you're buying the stock after a nine-day run-up, right? You don't want that stock. That's the stock that eventually is going to get pulled. So NVIDIA is arguably the strongest stock on the board right now, okay? The stock broke out right over here, okay? It broke out on April the 24th. It did not break out today. It broke out April the 24th. Uh, this was roughly, what, 27 points ago, okay, in a month or so, roughly 27 points. The higher it goes, the higher probability eventually you'll get pulled. So you don't want to start entering trades. In other words, if your first trade today on the video through this 27-point move was at 300 today, you got lucky and you're doing it wrong, okay? It's just reality. You want stocks that are coming out of bases, very, very tight bases off of a bottom range or a consolidation. For example, right, what's a day without me not screwing up a trade? Do you guys remember Meta yesterday, right? Meta, I, again, I, it was tight. Super, super tight. I said, listen, if it can reclaim, it can go. Of course I lost money on Meta today because the stock trades like like Satan. But I did come to a good conclusion on this thing. Meta, you could only buy into weakness, into rising support. Um, if you don't buy into rising support, you're going to do what kind of what I did today. I bought it into strength. The stock went up 30 cents and went down a dollar. Uh, got me out of the trade. Not a big loss. There's nothing to do about the money. It's only a buck. But the point is later, it, it kind of uh, held the rising 60-minute support. And guess what? The stock rallied $3 from my entry, right? Another day, another day of screw up. Not before you take out the violin, it was a super day, super duper day. We'll get to uh, the pivots in a second. But more important is how you approach the day. And I, and I think one of the most important parts of today's session was what we talked about last night on Tesla. If you guys remember... Uh, last night, they had their uh, their event, right? They had their event, their Q&A session. Elon Musk then did the rounds 
on uh, CNBC and all that good stuff. And I came into uh, today's session and I said, well, well, what happens if they don't pull it on the bottom of the range, right? You always have a plan, you always have an opinion, but like I say on every single video that we do, don't you have to owe it to yourself to be prepared on both sides of the market? And although my plan today was, well, if they get rid of, if they stuff the gap and it goes right in the day, this whole 6350, 63 level, it was going to be a huge potential trade. That never happened. Guess what? There's an other side of the trade. And the other side of the trade was 170.5, 171. It needs to build. And Tesla took off. I was very, I, was, I think all of us were pretty pleased with the trade. Not only did it get above that 70 and a half, 71, it never down ticked from there, which was, which was a phenomenal trade. I thought there was a shot it could get to 74, 75. It got right in between uh, 74 and a half. Is this Tesla out of the woods? No, of course not. It's not. It's still below the 50-day moving average. One of the very few stocks that are uh, uh, still under the 50-day moving average. But it's a really good step. You know, I would have preferred the trade to the bottom because it was more room. But again, you get the market that you want, not the market. Uh, well, excuse me. You get the market that you get, not the market that you want. Uh, but ultimately, the most important part, and I thought this was the most important trade of the day, not because it was the biggest mover, but because we were prepared on both sides. And I always tell everybody, don't fall in love with the stock, okay? I love Tesla, but I don't love Tesla to go long all the time. I love Tesla because it's the greatest stock to trade. And that's the whole point, to trade. And if you are prepared on both sides, that means you have no emotion, you have no expectations, uh, and you are prepared for measure potential on both sides of the range. Again, like I said, would I have put uh, uh, Wanted a, a bigger move to the downside, absolutely. But again, when that doesn't happen, all your, your emotions, all your opinion uh, goes away. Price action takes place. And so it took out uh, the 70 and a half, 71 level and traded right to supply here. As you can see, this Bollinger Band uh, slash the 50 day uh, EMA uh, into supply, which is a really, really good trade. So most important part, especially uh, for new traders, again, have a plan, right? And I've said this all the time. Don't be afraid to be wrong, okay? If you're going, if, you're, if your whole thing is you're trying to build up an audience to show everybody how smart you are, you're in the wrong business. Nobody cares. Nobody cares about calls and this and that. The, jo the, the job title is being a, a savvy money manager, not a, you know, to be the smartest guy in the room. And if you are the smartest guy in the room, that means you're the loudest guy in the room. That means you're telling everybody how smart you are and everybody knows there's nobody smart that tells everybody all day how smart they are. So again, zip it. But, all that said, really, really good move. Uh, really good move. Uh, we were prepared, and that's all you could ask of yourself every single day. Let's continue, right? Market exploded today, nearly 1.5% moves on all the index, a little bit below. Um, NASDAQ was up about 1.3%. The Dow was up about 1.3%, 400 points. So this massive rally uh, just continues. Again, I, I avoid the stocks that are up nine days in a row. I'm looking for deep channel ranges. And that's exactly, if you look at every single pivot today, it had deep channel ranges. And what I mean by that, it's either coming off the bottom or coming off the middle. They're not making their seven, eight, nine day run. So let's talk about the day. Really aggressive uh, crowd, right? 136 needs to build. Again, we're not looking at crowd. You know, somebody asked me, you know, what do you think of snow versus crowd? And I said, right, snow broke out above here, right? So again, it's been on a great, great run, but I don't want this up here. The, this, the, the trade was here or here, right? It's not here. But a name like Crowd, which is in the same space, gave exactly the same type of potential, right? It's coming out of a middle channel. I think we talked about Crowd the last couple of days. If not, I apologize. I forgot what I talked about on the video uh, during the webinar. But this is a phenomenal move, man. You got a $3 move, no down ticks. I mean, that's a beautiful, beautiful trade. Here's the whole range here. It got rejected 136 three times. It took out the 36. And again, the whole point of this PS60 theory is stocks trade from supply to supply and demand to demand. So again, took out 36 and stopped right on supply at 139. Obviously, the next big level here uh, is going to, to re reclaim this 40, 41 level for the next leg up. But, but a beautiful move. Absolutely beautiful move. Uh, Meta, again, I... I <laughs> anyway, Meta is at 143, uh, 243, okay? However, and I screwed up this trade. It is what it is. It, it, sometimes you just can't buy... Certain stocks you just can't buy into strength. And I'm learning more and more about that on Meta. So again, it took out this whole range here, got above uh, the 240, 30 level. Uh, it went up like 30, 40 cents, came, came down, and then later ran up about $3. This thing, guys, watch this thing for tomorrow. If there is, and I don't have any right now, obviously, uh, you know, it ran up $3 without me, but that's okay. Okay, I chose not to go back in. I'm okay with that. 
But tomorrow, I am definitely watching Meta. If it opens up lower into rising support, I want to watch Meta because, again, look how close it is to the top of the range here from the highs from the beginning of the month. And if this thing starts confirming the highs in the beginning of the month, man, this thing could really, really take off. So only weakness uh, am I watching Tesla into tomorrow unless some massive option flow comes in with short-term, like 250, 255, uh, weekly calls, uh, ACVA, I never got there. Uh, Airbnb never got there. Uh, Amazon was awesome. Uh, still, still awesome. Uh, 114 was the big level yesterday. We talked about that on the video. 1480 needs to confirm to build more. Stock traded a little bit less than uh, 116. Traded, you know, closed within 30 cents of the highs. Uh, there was still coming for big option. This is this is the call buyers from two days ago. 115, 120, 125. They were coming this morning for the 16, 17, and 18 weeklies and the 125s in June's. I still like more upside on uh, Amazon. Uh, DVAX didn't confirm. Talk about, here we talk about all the time. Guys, watch for stocks with option flow. This UPST went bonkers, right? Really, really strong. So UPST, they were coming for, oh, I got allergies. I'm about to sneeze any second. They were coming, <clears throat> excuse me. They were coming for the 21 and 22 weekly call buyers. Uh, 2064 needs to build. Here was UPST, right? Here was UPST. So it took out this 2064, this big candle from a couple of days ago and traded all the way up to 2223. Really, really strong move. Congratulations for you guys uh, who got that as well. And I believe uh, that is it, right? So look, you, you can literally tonight go and watch, you could probably find 200 stocks that look good for tomorrow. That's where the market is. The market is strong. Uh, the market is aggressive. Let me give you guys a couple of names uh, that could be good uh, for tomorrow uh, for some fresh ideas, either reclaiming supply uh, or about to reclaim the previous channel's high. So let's talk about some names. Uh, Roblox today, first close uh, above the 50-day moving average. You can see here, finally got above this light blue line. Only reason why I stopped was the Bollinger Band here. Keep an eye on Roblox. If it could start confirming today's channel, it could start filling in some of this gap uh, all the way up to 44. Uh, Apple, we talked about yesterday, not quite yet ready. But again, this thing is setting up just like Microsoft did a couple of days ago, right? You can see it really, really tight here. If Apple can somehow reclaim the five-day moving average, maybe this thing finally wakes up and joins the party. Because you guys remember, it still hasn't, it, it still hasn't confirmed the earnings high run. So it's very, very close. So if we could reclaim the five-day moving average in the next day or so, hopefully tomorrow, I think we get back to uh, the highs. So I like Apple there. Um, let's see what else I like. We talked about Shopify. Uh, Microsoft continues to look great. Um, look at pl uh, PLTR, right? PLTR had good earnings, had a big run. And this thing is very, very close of taking down this whole range here, right? You see this whole range that started on February the 16th? If it could take out this whole range here, they were coming for September and August, like uh, the, the 11, the 12, the $13 calls. This is a good looking chart. Best scenario tomorrow, they open this thing weak, uh, you know, you know, take some profit takers, trap some shorts to the bottom range, take a red to green and take out the, the February highs. Because if it does, this thing looks uh, poised for another day. And a small cap stock for you guys to keep an eye on. Look at this uh, GMDA. A uh, nice little chart. Had a big, big range breakout that had uh, about a month worth of distribution a couple of days ago. If it starts taking out the highs from a couple of days ago, maybe you start your next leg up. That's it, guys. That's it. Sometimes uh, you don't need uh, a whole lot of time to break down the market. The market is strong till it's not. Stay away from overextended names because if there is a, a pull in the market, it's always the ones who are uh, who are, has a big high flying uh, potential uh, or have been on the high flying magic carpet ride. You always want to go for stocks sitting at the bottom of the range or the middle of the range that are coming up. Hence the you know hence my old adage uh, you know you could, there's two ways to jump right. If you're going to jump, jump from the first floor. Don't jump from the tenth because on the first floor you might get a nick and scratch and maybe bump your knee. On the tenth floor you might find yourself with a severed head. Guys, God bless. I'll see you all tomorrow. Take care.